بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما Now the next thing we'll we'll try to see how you will be able to access the virtual device like in this case let's see how you want to access the wsa or firepower any of your virtual devices so the first thing we need to know the ip addressing of those devices so if you see, if you see the topology here the topology we do have these these are the typical devices what is available on the rack so let's say i want to access this acs device or maybe esa or any of these devices or server a and server b so they all connects to some kind of virtual switch network because these are all uh, running inside the vms so there is a virtual switch which connects all these devices and there is a pre configured vlans uh, which is going to connect to the physical switch and from connecting your physical network to the virtual network now in this case you will have a table normally inside the documentation you will have the ip addresses which are pre configured so we are not going to disturb those things because if you want to get into the gui directly you can get into the gui of any of the device by directly typing the ip address like in my case let's say i want to access this wsa so i have to enter this ip address on the on any of the browser to log into that particular device so similar way i but again you in order to access that you will be doing that from any of your servers like in this case uh in this case again if you want to access any of the vm like some of the cisco appliances have a password and also you need to make sure that you know what is the username and the password so there is no default so already they have set the password so you have to follow that one so and additional things uh, if you are connecting to the server there will be a separate password so figure out the passwords like i i'll be using the pca so the password will be admin and the default one a and i will also require the server a from where i'll be accessing the other devices so this is the administrator and the password these options so you need to know the ip addressing and the passwords in order to log in to any of the devices so if you want to access the devices we can go back to the control panel and here you will see the device device access these are the devices now in order to access the devices so normally you will be able to access the devices from here but here it says unable to load the rdp or vnc connections so normally you will see the device names so when you click on them automatically it will open up that's one kind of thing you will see normally but in this case as this is not loading so there are some alternate options you can go with so in the documentation if you see there is an option called connecting to the virtual machines so one option is you can connect via control panel the one option which i have just shown you so from the control panel what you can do is you can go ahead and connect to these devices here okay so so here you can see the documentation here accessing the device devices so one option is we can connect those virtual machines using the control panel first let me show you the control panel option let's open up in a different page and other option is via you can use uh, any connect option because in this case i want to connect to the virtual machines the server a server a and pc a these are the two devices which i'll be using for logging to the devices so if you are going with a control panel normally inside the control panel you can see the option there is a option called remote desktop access so accordingly it will show you this uh, vnc player these are actually the vnc uh, shortcuts so when you click on them it will automatically open up the open up the console of that particular uh, pc or the server so as you can see the control panel is uh, not working here it's unable to load so in case if you have any any of these issues you can go with an alternate way to connect now the alternate way is you can use the second option via any connect 
so in case of any connect so what what i require is i need to have this any connect client so let me see if i have any connect cisco any connect you need to install so if you don't have you can go and directly download by going to the browser of course it, it shows up a browser here when you click on it they, they give the url so when you click on it it will automatically connect and it will ask you to download the any connect option here so in my case i don't need to do this so as i already have the any connect so i can directly go to the any connect and i can try to do that so use this url to connect so where x will be your uh, X will be your rack number. So the rack number is I'm using seven here. So probably here I need to replace this URL with seven. That's a mistake I did. So I have to replace that X with seven. So when I say connect, then it should prompt me the username and the password. So untrusted server blocked. So we should change the settings. Just, just uncheck this option. Because by default, any untrusted VPN connections will be blocked. So you have to uncheck that option in order to be able to connect. Then it will ask you connect anyway. Then you need to enter the RAG details. In my case, it's going to be SC RAG 7 and the password here, vivo dvm. So whatever the uh, access given to you. Now, once you do that, there should be connection and accordingly you, you can connect now. Now directly what you can do is if you want to access, now you can access any of these five virtual machines directly from a remote desktop connection. So I need to simply say remote desktop and then the rack number 10 dot. Uh, this is how you can do it once they get connected. Now this is more like I'm connecting uh, to the remote network. And I can directly use remote desktop connections to log in to any of the computers as if I'm sitting on that network. So that's how you do. So once your uh, VPN shows connected, you can see it shows connected and you can see the timer as well. It shows up. Now you can minimize this. Now I can go ahead and uh, type in the remote desktop connection to access my access the devices directly from here. So in my case, I need a PC one. So the PC one is going to be X will be 7.1. So it will prompt for the username and the password. Now username and the password, you need to check the documentation for that. Now in this, there is a, a IP addressing and the passwords column. From there, you can, you, can, you, you can get these details. So let me see the details. I think I remember those details. The, remember, the default, you will be admin and the password is default one capital A. Let me just quickly remember this or else type in. So now I should be able to access the PC one, which is again the VM, but I'm accessing it remotely. So this is my remote host, the PC one. So it's loading. Meantime, I'll also initiate one more remote connection for server because I need server for accessing my WSA. So if I go back to, to the IP addressing, so let me let me see the IP addressing. So connecting to VMs via any connector I'm connecting here. Now this PC is loading, so you can see it's loading. It's asking the password again. Password is default one capital A.
Now, similar way, I, I want to connect a server as well. Now, the server IP address is 172.16.10.100. Now, this is common for all. If you check the topology, this is my server one. Now, these servers you can use for multiple purposes, like you can use them for DNS, DSCP, or any other FTP services, probably Active Directory services. These are all will be integrated, so you can use these things. So in my case, I'll be using this server for specifically for accessing the remote here. So let's initiate 172.16.10.100. I can connect to both the servers. At this point of time, I need only one server as of now. And the login will be administrator. If you check the password, the default password will be default 1A. I think that's the same. Uh, password here, but the username will be capital A with administrator. So I should be able to connect to this server as well. Now, this is how you connect to the virtual machines remotely, uh, because these virtual machines you need to be able to access in order to use these PCs, whether you are testing any host in the LAN or whether you are testing any of your servers, then you need you require these things. So let me just quickly check if the password is correct or not. So the password is default 1A. So I think that's a password here. One A is a capital letter. So, so let me just quickly see the password. Now here you can see the username. I think maybe I have to type this. So let me try this one. That might be the reason. So 172.16.10.100. Uh, I'm going to connect to an administrator, but this is a desktop administrator. I have to connect to the, connect to the other one use a different account and then the password is default 1a so we need to log into that domain i think that might be the correct way to do that or else it is actually trying to log into the local administrator account so once i provide the correct credentials i should be able to log in you can see this is how you access the virtual machines remotely on the on the INI rack. Okay, so in case if you want to extend the session, then probably you can use this option, extend the current session. Uh, your configurations will be present, so you can continue the configs, but there is a time gap, I think 30, 30 minutes at least prior. Uh, during the session, you have requested the configs. In case if you want to extend the session, there should be some time gap should be there, like at least 30 minutes or more. And if you have any technical issues, you can just raise a ticket where you, if you have any kind of issues, you can send it. Uh, depending upon that, you will get a reply from the technical team, probably on the registered email address. So you will be able to follow that uh, email chain from your registered email address as well. Okay, so now once we have access to the server, like if you remember, we have access to the PCA and the server A, and we have seen how to do that. Uh, I have used this AnyConnect, probably I'm, I'm using this AnyConnect to access the devices. And accordingly, you can use remote data. Once you uh, connect to AnyConnect, you can access these devices, the VMs. And from here, if I want to access any of my virtual device, like in, in my case, in case of CCI security preparation or security labs, NPR IE security here. So I want to access the devices, like we'll try to do that with a WSA. Now you can see there are two WSAs here. So some kind of redundancy options if you want to set up. And even you have uh, Cisco ICE as well too, and then FMC, and then ESA device, and then ACS. ACS is not uh, now is used. So still you have that option, uh, probably IPS device. So any of these devices you want to access, we do it directly from the server. So we have a virtual switch connection 
and I can just type in the IP address to access those devices. So if I want to access my WSA here, so first we need to figure out what is the IP address of my WSA. So if I go back to the IP addressing and password options, so if I want to access my WSA, now this is going to be the IP 172.16.5.100 and the username and the password. So let's go to the server, open any of your browser you can use. So let's say I'm using this uh, Mozilla here. So I need to type in the IP address of 172.16.5.100. That's an IP of my WSS. So here it shows up. The system cannot communicate with the external server. Okay, so you can see here, I'm able to log into the WSA one here. Uh, there was a licensing issue. So once you raise some ticket in case if there is any. So whenever you're trying to log into WSA, now you need to know the basic options. Like in this case, if you're trying to log into the WSA, then you need to use HTTPS 172.16 IP address and then port number 8443. That is the default settings. Of course, there will be a factory defaults. If you check the workbook, the default will be 172.168.42.42 IP. So either you can use that IP connecting to a cross cable and you can try that or else you can do this. Like in this case, this is what you have to use as per my rack. And we have to log in with the username admin and the password is default one capital A and then exclamatory mark. Login. So I should be able to log into the WSA. Now, once we are able to log in, then we have to verify whether all the options are available or not. Because normally, uh, if the license is not applied, then you will not be able to see these options. Like, let's say if I go to security and if I click on web proxy, you can see you should be able to see the options. It shows up. If I get the options, uh, then most likely the license will be applied. And if the license, uh, if not applied, then you will not be able to see the options. Like you can see here, this is the options what I'll see. So if I check on the WSA2, I have logged in with WSA2 also, this is what you will see. If I click on this web proxy, this is what it shows up. The license file must be installed prior running to the options. Now, anyway, we need just one WSA at this point of time, we don't need. So I just try to log in both and see whichever works, I'll be using that. Uh, at this point of time, we don't need any redundancy WSA, so we can go with the first option. So this is how it looks. So there are plenty of things you will see. And as here, there are default settings are already done. So we're not getting into the default settings. So if you want to know the basic default settings, what will be there, you can just refer the workbook. In my workbook, I have set up everything from the scratch where with a default and you can move. But here in our racks, we don't get into from the basics. So we'll try to adjust the topology as per the rack and we'll try to make some few changes according to that.